Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to round number three of the Rich Energy British Mini Bikes Championship. And we are here at a very busy Wilton Mill circuit for this third round, very popular track with the riders. As you can see from this superb drone footage. Rich Energy British Mini Bikes continue here at Wilton Mill. I'm Jake Sanson, Chris Ora is uh, alongside me. So obviously the competitors are continuing their way around this uh, Wilton Mills circuit over the course of the day. Super Minis coming up next. Carl Ryde and Joe Dickinson. Not much to choose between them in terms of raw pace. Dane Blackburn and Ash Barnes on the second row of the grid with Jack Bednarak and Richard Holmes Williams together on the third row of the starting grid. Row four sees Ryan Tyres and JJ Cunningham beside each other. Then Lawrence Wardle and Sam Crooks to round out the top ten. Joe Duggan is alongside Tom Lewis on the sixth row of the grid. Then Jordan Pritchard and James Dutton from Stephen Brooks and Mike Smallbones rounding out the row nine. It is Callum Ricketts and then Craig Spencer. From row 10, it is Michael Garwood and Chris Patterson. And then Lee Thompson is beside Simon Chambers. We've got Dean Bednarek alongside Gary Butler on the 12th row of the grid. Then it is Howard Taylor, Luke Bithell and Dan Scheller. The latter two unable to set times in their qualifying sessions. It's not going to be too long at all before the Super Minis head out onto the circuit. Of course, the officials are trying to gain back time and momentum lost from the earlier red flag incidents. We've had... Uh, uh, three races, I think it is now, that have been stopped uh, at various points over the course of racing. But the gap between uh, the likes of Ride and Dickinson are going to be fascinating. And of course, the pair of them are both on bikes numbered 48, just to confuse you. So there, it's going to be an interesting one as they duel away for position. It's Carl Ride who will start on the inside line, and Joe Dickinson, the one nearest to the camera, that will line up on the outside line on the grid. But the riders are heading out now for the Brat Bike Super Minis. And it will be interesting to see how they get off the grid because obviously these guys are uh, getting the momentum built up uh, very quickly. But we can see now that the circuit is getting faster and faster as time wears on. And obviously now the competitors uh, will want to put on a really exciting show uh, as the momentum continues. So the riders just getting themselves dialed in. They obviously have to make sure that the tyres and brakes are warmed up efficiently enough around this uh, sighting lap uh, to gain the momentum. But... It's obviously going to be interesting for uh, myself and Chris, the work cut out for us with the two front riders in the, the H150s, uh, both as the number 48. That's not going to be confusing in the slightest, but uh, that's uh, a normal day in the office for the Rich Energy British Mini Bikes. I think so. That's one to look at the... Uh, I think it's Joe Dickens and Nash Barnes on, isn't it? That's one to look at the uh, lap score as far as on the timing charts. Indeed. They, uh, both are on different transponders. <laughs> so the Brat Bikes... Super Minis, great category here. We've got the mixture of the 85cc two-strokes. They can run large, slightly larger up to 105. I think most usually are 85s, plus the 154 strokes. Both these bikes derived from youth motocross, and they really are competitive. They sound crisp. We're just listening to them down in the waiting zone now. Those two-strokes really do sound nice and crisp out there, and mixed, of course, with the 150s. Which I think with that uh, smoother four-stroke power band would normally suit the track quite well. But it does seem to be going the way of the 85s in qualifying. The last few riders lining up. Big group of riders here again. Great to see so many riders out there on the track today. Indeed. And Joe Dickinson starting second on the grid to the left of your picture on the front row alongside Kyle Ride. Dickinson leads the title race. So from second on the grid, he actually has a bit of an advantage here getting to the first corner. If he can get a faster uh, bolt off the line... He can actually cut across to the first corner into uh, Oblivion and into Crook, and he can bolt away. But can he do it? Here we go, then. Wait for the flag to drop for the Super Minis. And away we go. Two-stroke versus four at the start. It's the two Husqvarna's that lead the way through. Joe Dickinson He's and done it. Kyle Ride. He's done it. Dickinson's jumped the gun already and gone straight ahead of Kyle Ride. No problem at all. Looks like Dane Blackburn in third. Good jump for the Honda there. Fourth position. Was a good oh! oh, trouble there. Front wheel washing out into Christmas. The KTM goes down. Let's have a look at that one. I'm trying to see who the rider was. One of the top ten. And, oh, just a bit. The front wheels seemed to wash out in the braking there. I wasn't so expecting easy. to come across, were they? So easy to do at this stage of the race. The rider has, well, attempted to get going again. I, would, I was about to say has got going again, but it's only an attempt at the moment. I don't know if it's actually going to uh, work because the rider has picked the bike up and has uh, started to try and edge it towards Ashby, but I'm not entirely sure if that's going to uh, work out in formation. So a very tricky situation there for the rider, but certainly out at the start, that's exactly what championship leader Joe Dickinson needed to do from the outside line, and he's nailed the start. Perfect. So here we go, Husqvarna 1 and 2, Joe Dickinson and Kyle Ride 
Honda 150 in third with Dane Blackburn. Fourth position, Ash Barnes from Richard Holmes Williams and Jack Begnarek in there as well. So we've got a battle here between the two and the four strokes here because the 248s, Joe Dickinson and Carl Ride, both Husqvarna 85cc two strokes. Most of the bikes at the front nowadays do seem to be the two strokes. But we've still got one or two of the Honda 150s running well here. Dane Blackburn in third. Richard Holmes Williams in fourth. Well, fifth, I should say. Yeah, because we have got Ash Barnes between those two. Slight hiccup on the timing screen. Not quite sure why it's uh, not counting down laps at the moment because we should have 11 laps to go rather than 12. But for some reason, uh, it's uh, just having a little bit of a headache at the moment. Must be the time of the month for the uh, timing screen. But we'll get it uh, up and running again as soon as we possibly can. But there is that uh, squabble. Ash Barnes still in front of Richard Holmes Williams, who is never far from the front end of a decent British mini bikes field, is he? He's always right up at the sharp end. But Barnes is doing a fantastic job, and he's another of the riders that's on double duty, of course, this weekend, uh, really enjoying his time on the Super Minis as he tries to get that little bit way closer to the riders in front. Not too sure if the two or four strokes will make that much of a difference around here because we've got a real mixture. As you see, the 38 and 11 a bit further down. That's Ryan Tyres also battling away further down. Got a real mixture of the two and the four strokes as again they trade positions. Now the 114 of Dane Blackburn pulling away slightly from this battle here between Ash Barnes and Richard Holmes Williams. We've got the number 19 in there, right? I think there's a lap down at the moment. Oh, that's Jack Benderek. Jack Benderek, oh, is Benderek? Is oh, my apologies. He yeah, managed right. to get past yeah, both of them, through. which is why it was confusing because he was in sixth at one stage and he's managed to nip them off one by one. And now Benderek is right there. In front of Barnes, Barnes is still hungry for a way through on the inside, but Bednarek doing a fantastic job as he runs in fourth place. They're just trying to uh, open up the throttle that fraction of a second quicker at each apex to really start to get back after Blackburn. And this is where he got the difference of the two and the four strokes. The, uh, the well, These bikes are quite high revving anyway, even the four strokes, but the two stroke really has got an aggressive power band. It's all mid to top end really, so uh, they've got to keep working those engines. The four stroke a little bit more torquey, you would say, out of those slower corners. So you have got the opportunity, you would say perhaps in the slower, more technical part of the track, such as here, it might be a bit easy to carry some corner speed through on the four strokes, but certainly when you get those 85cc machines singing, they don't half go, especially down the, the back straights here. But certainly the, uh, the 150 is suiting themselves well at the moment, but it is all about Joe Dickinson and Kyle Ride at the front, the two Husqvarna's in the front here. Making their way down towards Ashby once again. All very close. Oh, Ooh, lovely. Lovely down the inside. That was an opportunistic move there. I don't think Dickinson even saw that one coming, you know, because that was a, a fairly easy line for him. And Ride just danced up the inside line and snatched the lead back again. But these two are essentially having an exhibition run out front for Husqvarna, aren't they? They're just dancing away, uh, both on very similar bikes, and they're just charging in front. It's a lovely run from them as they just continue to uh, skate around this Wilton Mill circuit. No problems at all for them, keeping it nice and in gesture and uh, having a lovely time of it at the front. It's a nice Sunday ride on the countryside. So very close at the moment between Carl Ride and Joe Dickinson, first and second place. Both riders learning the circuit very well grooved at the moment. So as we see, the number 19 has had a great ride through the field at the moment. Now Bednarek coming under some real pressure from Ash Barnes into Christmas corner. They've got the 114 of Dane Blackburn just ahead in third position, a distant third at the moment, though as Blackburn tries to break away from this battle for fourth place. Bednar actually ahead of Barnes, KTM and Husqvarna, pretty much the hardware of these bikes, identical really. And there we see the Honda just behind our Richard Holmes Williams. All very close here, two stroke versus four. It's a battle here for fourth position. It's worth remembering that the lead battle, Carl Ride having got past Dickinson, Ride is technically still in the fight for the title race, despite missing lead. Because obviously, uh, once they take away, the, uh, I think there's only one or maybe two rounds at the maximum uh, that you can drop in terms of the point score. At least that's certainly been the way it's been in the past. So Ride's still very much in the hunt for the title race because he blitzed it at the first round at Ella Park. And now he's here at Wilton Mill trying to gain back some momentum with a decent result. And the way he's going in front of Dickinson, he's definitely going to gain some ground and momentum. So when it comes to... Uh, the uh, drop scores uh, system at the end of the season, unless all of them do count this time uh, because of the current outbreak situation. There is a genuine chance that Ride is still getting himself into a decent championship winning position if he can get himself back at the front. Missing lead was unfortunate, but fighting back and getting back past Dickinson, very crucial in the title fight. And here we have a look at Ash Barnes, just trying to get the exit speed out of the corners as we go into boot once again. Now uh, the uh, KTM and Husqvarna here, pretty much as we said before, identical bikes underneath. 
both falling under the KTM group nowadays, of course. They've just lapped the 0-7 a little bit further down the field. I think that's Gary Butler. Yeah, quite possibly, just on the edge of the top 20. Not really causing any trouble for the leaders, of course. Up the hill they go. Once again, they're losing Richard Holmes-Williams slightly, but still very good. Oh, they've got a back marker in front of Dane Blackburn. Now, that, to think, would be uh, oh. Lee Thompson, possibly. And that's the 177. That's Gary Butler. Oh, that's Butler. So the other one was Howard Taylor. Yeah, that was Howard Taylor, I think. That's Here not a nice part of the circuit to catch anybody on yeah. the way out of Christmas. Goodness me. Very slow technical part of the track there. And it's just racing, isn't it? This is unfortunate, really, just to encounter the slow rider at the wrong part of the track. So a very tricky battle, this. And now that uh, the momentum appears to be slightly with Ash Barnes, there's an awful lot that can go wrong here for the 19 of Jack Bednarek. So he's just got to keep it nice and honest. He's got to keep patient at this point of the boot because uh, Barnes is very close to him. But the man who's really got to be sensible here is Richard Holmes-Williams. He's still there sat in sixth position. These two are getting closer all the time. He can afford to have a couple of bike lengths discrepancy behind these guys because if they connect, he needs to have time to roll off the power gently squeeze the brake, compress it as they come through the apex and avoid the incident if there is one in front. So Holmes Williams wants to get involved in it, but he can't afford to get too meaty towards them in the apex of the braking zone because if he's too close and they squabble, he's got nowhere to go but into them. Shadowing at the moment then, Holmes Williams as Ash Barnes again. Let's have a look on the exit here. Does seem to just carry the speed out of the corner just a little bit more strongly as they head towards boot. And again, Holmes Williams just looking threatening there as they go into boot. Bednarek on the number 19. See, this is the difficulty. It's stalemate yeah. in a battle like this. You've got the three riders all very evenly matched, but you've got to get past the rider in front of you nice and quickly. Otherwise, you're just going to be squabbling for the same bit of paint on the inside line of the curve. You've got to be so careful. And this is the difficulty. You are squabbling for position. You're trying to make your move. You're trying to get on the inside line. But there's not much difference between these riders at all in terms of raw speed. You can't get the overtaking move because you can't get the undercut. And then the rider behind is, comp is uh, compressed back in. Oh, got trouble oh. here. That's uh, a bit further down the field. I think it may possibly be Christopher Patterson. We're not sure. We're just having a look at uh, the 19 here of Bednarek, especially through boot. You can just see how much of a deal it is oh. to get the power down as Barnes has a look. Bednarek's up the corner. Let's have a look at Bednarek's line through here because you can really see how, again, you just see the back, the back end just kicking slightly. So that's getting the power down on that 85cc machine. It's a really hard-hitting power band. All the power comes down at the top end. And Bednarek working hard to get that power down, but obviously not dump it all at once because the, those bikes, they, they're really peaky power band. They do kick in. Here we come once again. Barnes really does seem to be putting the claws down now as Holmes Williams starts to get involved. Nips down the inside of the bat marker. This, incidentally, once again, this is the battle for fourth position. Dane Blackburn on the 1-1-4 has cleared away slightly. Joe Dickinson and Kyle Wright still all on their own at the front. But Ash Barnes, at the moment, can't find it. You can just see how the, the blue pipe on those bikes, they really are working hard at the moment. I wonder if Bednarek's tyres are starting to overheat here because he's really struggling to maintain the grip in the braking zone. The, look, the bike starts to wash. He manages to catch it before it really starts to tip over. But it's unsettling him, and it's costing him a fraction of a second every time he gets back on the power to try and unsettle the bike. They go into the last lap, and this is going to be really tricky for Bednarek to hold on to now because you've got the eight of Ash Barnes really starting to stretch him. He's trying to test him into the braking zones here, and Barnes knows this is his only chance now. He's got to go for it. They've got to slow a bike up in front, so Barnes has got to read the situation quite wisely here. Bednarek is having to play a little oh, bit cautious. Oh. Caught off on the back marker there. That was close. That. Far too close. So, that, uh, if, if anything, now that has actually benefited Bednarek as he pulls away a bike length there. Get a better drive out of Ashby. Meanwhile, Kyle Ride and Joe Dickinson come around the final corner to take the chequered flags. So that looks like Kyle Ride, I think, has taken the win. Joe Dickinson in second. It's going to be the 114 of Dane Blackburn in third. There he goes. Blackburn around the final corner. And Bednarek just about holding oh. off the number eight of Ash Barnes and Holmes Williams. So there we see the uh, two Dickinson, top. Dickinson and Ride having a conversation yeah. as they go out. This is what I was talking about, about it basically being like a benefit for Husqvarna. They're just enjoying themselves up front. For them, it doesn't really matter who wins. They're first and second. What a fantastic run. Very good there.
Moto number two for the Brap Super Mini is coming up in just a few moments as we look at the superb panoramic of Wilton Mill and the M1 just at the top of your screen. Kyle Ride and Joe Dickinson trading positions in Moto number one, very close in qualifying as well. Dane Blackburn, Ash Barnes in fourth. Jack Bednarek who had such a good battle in Moto one in fifth from Richard Holmes Williams lining up in sixth position on the 126. Ryan Tyres in seventh from JJ Cunningham. Not too sure if he'll be out in this one. Lawrence Wardle, ninth. Sam Crooks in tenth. Joe Duggan and Tom Lewis in twelfth position. Jordan Pritchard in thirteenth from James Dutton. Stephen Brooks, Mike Smallbones, Callum Ricketts and Craig Spencer. Eighteenth position. Nineteenth for Michael Garwood, Christopher Pattinson, Lee Thompson. Simon Chambers, twenty-second from Dean Bednarek and Gary Butler in twenty-fourth position. Howard Taylor. Luke Bithell and Dan Shellard did not post a qualifying time. And notably uh, here as well, Jake, with the uh, all the, looking at those lap times and qualifying, all of the riders qualifying within the one-minute mark of this uh, very competitive bikes here, this is a very fast race category. Certainly is. And also you've got to take into account that although Ride had a bit of an advantage over Dickinson, he has got the measure of uh, this particular bike and this particular circuit. But... Look at the gaggle of riders from about third down to about six. There's only about half a second uh, covering most of them. So it really is a very exciting battle that these riders are going to take us into now as uh, we continue uh, this little scrap for position. But this is obviously, again, a shortened race distance. They've only got five laps where normally they'd have 12 because of the race stoppages earlier on. So now the riders have essentially got to do all of the hard work they would do in the first two or three laps, just building up the tyre temperature and the brakes on this formation lap so you can see they're actually pushing a little bit harder on the formation lap to bring the bikes back to the uh, start finish line almost at racing speed because essentially they've got to do most of the homework that they would do on the opening two or three laps on this one formation lap because you've only got five laps of racing so you've really got to maximize this lap out of the pits so certainly are getting the bikes uh, around very quickly getting the rubber down and although uh, the four strokes tend to warm up quite quickly, these two stroke machines actually, they do take a bit of warming up. So they'll have been down there in the waiting zone nice and early. And you see, if you go down there in person, you'll see how crisp those 85s in particular sound on the grid. Last few riders now making their way down into what looks set to be a very competitive race class. This is the Super Minis with Brat Bikes. And we're about to get underway for Moto number two. Three more races to go after this one, of course. We've got the Mini GP and the stock pit bike 140s to get underway soon. Flag drops. And away we go with the two Husqvarna's at front, Joe Dickinson and Kyle Wright. Looks like Dickinson has got the jump on the field. Good start from Dane Blackburn on the 114 in third position. Ash Barnes just behind in fourth. And aggressive down the inside. That was Richard Holmes Williams in fifth place. They pile through Christmas Corner for the first time. And once again, everyone just seems to have filtered their way through those corners okay. Through Ashby for the first time. And it's still Dickinson and Ride 1 and 2. So these two obviously are going to go and do their uh, demonstration run up at the front end of the field if they can get a bit of a, uh, a wiggle on. But this man in fourth position, Ash Barnes, he's the man with the keys to the castle for the podium now in fourth position, just chasing after Dane Blackburn. If he can get a decent run off the turns, he has a great chance to leap forward. Holmes Williams has already got a better start than he had from the previous race, but he's already already in the mix there fighting uh, with the uh, 188, I think it is, of... Uh, oh, no, sorry, that's the 11, my apologies, of Tyres. So Tyres is right in there uh, trying to move his way further forward. Uh, Jack Bednarek not able to get into the uh, front end of the field this time. So uh, a difficult situation for the competitors as they run through and uh, unable to take the start, actually, Bednarek. I'm not entirely sure what the situation was there for him. But uh, the battle is obviously raging as the competitors are starting to uh, accelerate around the circuit. And hotting up there for third place, the two Husqvarna's in front, the two number 48 Dickinson and Ryder at the moment. Blackburn holds on third on the 114, Ash Barnes on the KTM two-stroke. Very close behind him fourth, and now we'll see the two-stroke trying to maintain the power. And of course, it's got a sharper power band than its four-stroke counterpart. Richard Holmes Williams just behind, so can't really afford for Barnes to be too aggressive and lose that position. Um, let's see what happens when they go up to Christmas Corner. Blackburn guarding the inside, and again, Barnes cutting on the inside, using the power band of that two-stroke machine to get the power down a little bit more aggressively. But it's not enough to get the corner as they go through Christmas Corner, and Holmes Williams and Ty is still very much in there. Down the hill they go to Ashby. So now this battle is raging between the two riders on the same machinery up front. 
Dickinson still hanging on in front of Ride, gets on the cross a little bit. That's how hard he's pushing as they come off of Parker through Chapman and onto the back straight up towards the boot. Now, this is a very difficult section of the course when you're battling away with another competitor. Ash Barnes getting very close in behind Blackburn as they duel over third position. But still, Kyle Ride thinks he's got a run here on Joe Dickinson as they come off the turn once again. Three laps completed. The timing screen says nine to go. I don't know whether this one is being reduced to five laps or not or if it's going to go the full distance, but we'll soon find out as Ride gets right in tight behind Dickinson. They come into the braking zone for Christmas and there is absolutely nothing to choose between these two riders. They are absolutely knitted together. Gets across the curb, but well held there by Dickinson. Ride's going to commit anyway. Oh, Oh, dear, dear. dear. So Ride there squaring the turn off, going for the move, but wasn't quite enough. Dickinson holding firm and shutting the door firmly on Ride. So he's going to have to try and fight again here. We saw him squaring the turn off going down to Ashby and trying to get the momentum. These 85 machines, they are peaky, very sharp power bands. So uh, important not to lose the power as Dickinson have a quick look over the shoulder. Blackburn still in third from Barnes, Holmes, Williams and Tyres. You see them at the bottom of your screen now going around the final corner. And Ride with that mistake going for the pass has dropped a bit of ground. The gap goes to 1.2 seconds. All of the action here is for third position as again Barnes cuts to the inside coming up the hill towards Christmas they have just been shown the final lap board I can tell you that they have been shown the final lap board so it is going to get to be five laps which means this is the last lap so uh, they are going to have to push very hard then as Barnes is still trying to get on terms with Blackburn but Holmes Williams and Tyres are essentially at stalemate in fifth and sixth position it's now going to be about whether Ride can get one more crack at Dickinson but with the gap having opened up to 1.2 I would say probably not Looks like it was cost, that mistake, going for the pass in Ashby last time round. Looks like Dickinson is going to hold on to victory in this one as the action for third place hots up towards the boot section. Round the final corner goes Joe Dickinson to take the chequered flag. It'll be Kyle Ride in second place. Who's it going to be in third? Very close. And it looks like Dane Blackburn third, only just from Ash Barnes. Richard Holmes Williams and Ryan Tyres all very close. And that was a good battle there. Those two congratulating each other as they crossed the line, but uh, that was close going into Ashby. We saw uh, we saw Ride squaring the turn off, but wasn't quite enough to make the pass stick. Well, they've now had two races against each other, and they've both won one. So who does the washing up on the way home? I'm confused. I presume <laughs> usually the... Well, the rule normally is in motocross. Do they flip a the coin now, or what? I don't understand. The- theoretically, the second race is usually meant to be tougher. Oh, the I see. Uh, deteriorated so to speak as later in the day so normally I presume it'll be the same in BMB oh, okay. the tie break would be the second moto normally if they're tied on points that's true and the thing is as well of course is that uh, you know they're on lap 5 so they only had a 5 lap race there so it was a lot harder oh, we had trouble on the last lap we're just going to see whereabouts this is this is on the boot complex you might see just on the right of your screen yep. yellow flags rider going down <laughs>